Hi. Now in this video tutorial what I want to show you is how we work out the cos, sine and tan of 60 degrees and also of 30 degrees. Now to do this what I'm going to encourage you to do is learn what we call the trig ratios for a 60-30 degree triangle. And the sides are always in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to root 3. But before I get to this stage, what I want to do is take you back to how we get this particular set of ratios. So you'll see that come up in a moment. But what we'll do is we'll take an equilateral triangle, a triangle with all sides equal. And if it's got all sides equal, you should know that essentially all three angles are going to be equal and they're going to be 60 degrees, totaling 180 degrees. And if I was to draw a line down through the middle here, it's going to cut that angle of 60 degrees in half. Okay, So if we take that out, draw the line down, this angle in here is going to be 30 degrees. So I've just marked that in as 30 degrees. And that's going to mean that the remaining angle here is 90 degrees. A perpendicular line then. And because the equilateral triangle is essentially an isosceles triangle, this line here is going to cut the base in half. So if I had this side here, for instance, was two units, what I would notice is that this side, which is two units, they're all two units in fact, let's just put that on, this side would be cut in half. So what we've got here is essentially that this part is one unit and that part's one unit. I'll draw that triangle out again for you. Look, over here, if we cut the equilateral triangle in half, then what I notice is that this length is going to be half of this side. So in other words, put a 1 there and that will be 2 units. So when it comes to finding the cosine of 60 degrees, that's going to be easy because hopefully you know your basic rules for comparing sides. You might remember it as something called Sokotoa, S-O-H, then C-A-H and T-O-A. This is just a quick way that we can remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine compares adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent compares opposite over adjacent. And if we take this triangle here and we work with 60 degrees, then the opposite side to 60 degrees is going to be this one over here, so I just put that as an O. The side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse, and the remaining side is the adjacent side. So we've got our triangle labelled up here if we're going to work with 60 degrees. So when it comes to the cosine of 60 degrees, which is to compare the adjacent with the hypotenuse, then the cosine of 60 degrees will be the adjacent side, 1, over the hypotenuse, 2. And you get a half. And if you type into your calculator the cosine of 60 degrees, you should find you get a half, or 0.5 as a decimal, and that's an exact value. Now when it comes on to finding the sine of 60 degrees, sine is always comparing the opposite with the hypotenuse. So if I'm looking at the opposite side, oops, I got a problem, haven't I? I don't know what it is at the moment. But there's a way of finding out when you've got a right angle triangle and you know two sides. And that way is through Pythagoras' theorem. So if we call this x, hopefully you're familiar with Pythagoras' theorem. I'll just write up here by Pythag for short. What do we essentially have? Well, by Pythagoras' theorem, he discovered that if you square the hypotenuse, that's this side then, if you square it, it's equal to the sum of the squares of the other two shorter sides. In other words, 1 squared plus x squared. So in other words, you've got, for this particular triangle, 4 equals 1 plus x squared. And if we subtract 1 from both sides, that's going to tell us that x squared equals 4 take 1, which is 3. And if we square root both sides, we end up with x equaling the square root of 3.
Now I'm going to leave that as the square root of 3 because that's an exact value. If you took the square root of 3 on a calculator, what you get is an infinitely long non-recurring decimal called a rational number. All right. So if we're after exact values, let's leave that as root 3. And so this side here is root 3 units. So we just put that in as root 3. Now we can work out what the sine of 60 degrees is because the sine of any angle compares the opposite with the hypotenuse. So if I'm taking sine 60, it's going to be the opposite side, which is root 3, over the hypotenuse 2, root 3 over 2. Now what about the tangent of an angle, tan of 60 degrees in this case? Well tan compares the opposite with the adjacent. And so the opposite to 60 degrees is root 3 and the adjacent is 1. So you end up with root 3 divided by 1. A bit pointless though doing root 3 divided by 1. It's just going to be simply root 3. And I'd leave it like that. These are exact values. To work them out as decimals, you only get approximations because you get infinitely long non-recurring decimals. Try it on your calculator. Try the sine of 60 degrees. If you've got a modern one, it will give you root 3 over 2. If not, you're going to get a decimal down here. But you could always check it by typing in root 3 divided by 2 and check it against the decimal for sine of 60 degrees. And the same for tan of 60 degrees. So these are values that you should learn. Let's have a look at sine of 30 degrees, cos of 30, tan of 30 degrees now. Well, let's just draw up another triangle. The triangle we started with that I said to you that you should try and learn. I would always encourage you to learn these sides for this triangle that have come from this equilateral triangle. It's far easier to learn this, I feel anyway, than learning all of these different numbers here. Because as soon as you drop down this triangle, all you've got to do when someone says to you, what's the sine of 30 degrees? Think of the triangle and just think of what is the opposite side to 30 degrees. The opposite side is this one. What is the hypotenuse? That's the one opposite the right angle. So when it comes to the sine of 30 degrees, I know it compares the opposite with the hypotenuse. And I can see in my mind that the opposite is going to be 1 divided by hypotenuse 2, a half. And when it comes to cosine of 30 degrees, cosine compares adjacent with hypotenuse. So I've got this triangle in my mind and the adjacent side to 30 degrees is this side down here. A will label it as. Cosine of 30 degrees then, adjacent over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. And when it comes to the tan of 30 degrees, I know that it's opposite over adjacent. Here's my 30, what's the opposite side? The 1 over the adjacent, the root 3. 1 over root 3. And that's what I would remember, right? But I wouldn't physically learn these I find that quite difficult. I get muddled. But I always find it far easier just to learn the triangle, know how to find sine, cosine and tangent by comparing sides, and I can just do it so easily from the triangle. So that's what I would encourage you to do. One other point, by the way, is that if you did check this on your calculator, and if you've got a calculator that works in CERDs, you most probably wouldn't see this written. What they do is they rationalise top and bottom. That is, they times top and bottom by the square root of 3. So you'd have 1 times root 3, which is root 3, and in the denominator you'd have root 3 times root 3, which is 3. So you're more likely to see that rather than 1 over root 3. However, as I say, I would learn to work with the triangle and then you can find these values. OK, well, I hope you've got some idea of how we can calculate the exact values. And what I'll show you in another tutorial is how we can use these to work out other common multiples of these angles, the trig ratios. Like, for instance, 
if I looked at the multiple of 60 degrees like 120 degrees it's very easy to work out what the cosine 120 degrees is by using this idea and the quadrant rule okay but that's in a later tutorial